Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new episode of the Sky and Spice Adventure Soul Seeker series here on my channel. Today we're hoping to successfully get the enemy gold this time around on the Empire of Ice as we swap out for none other than Gilgrim right here purely because he has a water jetpack. So he can use that to maneuver over all of this ice and not need to worry about the physics. It's glorious that way. I couldn't be more happier with you know, the lack of ice physics that this guy um, presents us with, you could go as far to say. By the way, because it's the enemy goal that we need to focus on now, it's uh, going to mean that we're going to want to defeat every enemy we come across. You know, not doing that is going to make it much more difficult to complete the enemy goal objectives, mind you. Anyway, let's use our harpoon as well as our hose on this guy right here. Boom, baby. Every last one of them is out of here. So we're going to grab that waterman, all this gold. Head back here, grab that, and then we got to hit the swirly thing. Yep, time to advance through this with our jetpack. It's a shame, though, because we actually have to wait for it to recharge back up. Oh, what a big shame indeed. I've never been more shamed in my life to not have the ability to just use this infinitely because I'm down for the wrong path for that. Having this infinitely would be very useful for the sake of my sanity because then I won't have these gosh darn ice physics to worry about. Anyway, next thing we need is this right here. Sweet. And now, of course, Haldor is going to come in and disrupt everything because that is what he does. The original Double Trouble design that they didn't want to go to waste, so instead they turn it into an NPC for this level. Just for usual fun facts that I have for you guys as I fall around the hole, apparently. Yeah, Double Trouble for the last soul for us to seek out, but we're going to leave that until Chaos is there. We are. Oh, wait, let's hit that swirly thing, skip over this cutscene, and then we need this a bomb back here. So let's bring it. Not this way, apparently, because apparently we can't even travel that way. There are too many, like, collision hitboxes getting in the way, you go as far to say. Which is a bit of a rhyme, therefore, we're going to put without, without even knowing it. As I continue to stutter for perfect Skarna to take advantage of after I stutter with Sinner. She just anti-stutters everything, apparently. That's how it works with Sinner. Anyways, there's plenty of food to go around, not that we need it. Well, I suppose we did, we were like, free health away from maximum. But now, what we really needed was the artillery strike right there. we got to make sure we defeat every last one of these guys. I think the problem before was that I defeated some of those guys, like, before they came out of their ice shells. And I don't think that counted towards an enemy being defeated, hence why the enemy goal was a bit short the last time he was here. Anyway... Come over here, you frickin' artillery strike. No, not right there. Over here, I got stuck on the side of the thing with Bob, which, again, we're gonna stick with that because that's descriptive enough as is. Okay, let's finish off that, guys. Sweet. He wishes he stood a chance against the of Cinder over here. Anyway, that's down, but we also need to feed this guy, which, luckily, we can do so from down here. So... Let's have our fingers crossed and hope that this time we didn't fail the enemy goal because I really don't want to do this level all over again. I've had to defeat this freaking 20 minute wall boss fight once already and once is one too many times. But that cursed freaking wall that I hate, I hate it so much. Never thought I could have hated the wall to this caliber but then Empire of Ice came out and taught me that my hatred truly can get that passionate. Anyway, let's be destroying it without further ado. Really We're just going to rock back and forth, charging our shots up at random and hoping for the best, I suppose. Yeah, clearly, uh, clearly even, the speedrunning objective for this level is not hard. We managed to do it by accident the first time around, but the enemy goal objective, however, is hard. Because I totally would have got it first time around, but the game said no, and I hate it for it. You know, the entire of this game is garbage because it didn't give me the enemy goal and Empire of Ice. That's just how it works, my friends. That is how it works, baby. Okay, let's continue to destroy all this or not. Okay, all this has got to go. Sweet. Yeah, this is how we like to see it. Okay, here we go. Let's destroy that part of the wall then. And this part too. Bye bye. Have a nice day, and thank you, go again. I cannot watch myself with that accent, that accent is too perfect, even, how, even given how stereotypical it is even. 
So yeah, my apologies if that offended, but you know, that was not the intention. I'm just here to have fun. I hope you guys are having said fun alongside me, because that would be glorious. How? How did we miss the enemy goal? How? Okay, I'm just going to Photoshop this and pretend that we got the enemy goal the entire time. You're welcome, internet. Now you don't have to suffer through this level alongside me any further. Because, yes, that is stupid. There was no other enemies left to be defeated on the screen that I could see about. That has got to be a glitch. There's no other explanation. But luckily for me, we did get the enemy goal. If we didn't, that's a total lie. Because, you know, I photoshopped it. And if I photoshopped it, that makes it 100% legit. That's just how Photoshop works. Regardless, we have this to deal with. So, don't you dare think you can disappear on me, you stupid thing. As Undead is conveniently at the bottom. Either way, next up is air, so let's bring out Sonic Boom for that. I'm so depressed that I'm destroying elemental blocks that look to me funny because I really need a win and destroying these things comes with ease. So next up is going to be life. Stump Smash can deal with that. And his awesome gentlemanly top hat. Anyway, next up is Earth. Back to Prison Break then. Simply put, as you definitely heard me slamming on the portal right now. Boom! Water! That's gonna be your boy Slam Bam! From, you know, the very level that we just tackled and definitely succeeded with the enemy goal with, considering that, you know, I photoshopped it. Either way, here comes Tech, which is gonna be a trigger happy. So next up is Magic. Let's bring in Spyro! Good to see the good old buddy old pal. So let's destroy that and bring in fire. So that's going to be Ignitor, baby. Oh, yes. Let's go. Okay, with that being destroyed, we have so much treasure. Glorious, glorious treasure. Look at all this. Oh, yes, please, baby. Yes, please. But now, with that all being said and done, let's open up another chapter. That, uh, this time around, we are going to beat to 100% the Arcane Armory. Let's do this. All we've got to do is not lose a life. How hard could it possibly be? And hopefully, I haven't said that, didn't just jinx anything, because that would be tragic. Either way, we're going to skip over the cutscenes, because there's no need to watch the unnecessary deeps to even time and time again. So yes, unfortunately we are going to have a rather slow paced section within this level when we have the entirety of the Archean section to have to deal with all at once and it's going to be rather annoying all of that. Rather annoying indeed. So let's flip that on over where tech is going to become stronger so it's time to switch out for Drill Sergeant who's still not fully leveled up or upgraded for that matter. But hey, this level is going to be the start to achieving that I suppose. Even though we're never actually going to finish that achievement in this series, I wouldn't imagine so. There ain't going to be enough treasure in this here section to upgrade Jewel Sergeant with, and neither is there going to be enough experience for him either. I wouldn't think so anyway. I go let's destroy those guys, get that flipped on over. And it is just the no lives lost objects if we're missing, right? Yes, yes it is. Sweet, so let's continue to proceed to get out of here. Of course, when we um, open that up, the No Life Lost Objective was pre-ticked, but of course that is ticked off until you lose a life. So that's one of those to where you start at 100% and then you lose your 100% capabilities of it, you know. It's like marking, some people say you start at 100% and then you lose marks for everything you do wrong. Technically, that's not right at all. You start at zero and you gain marks for everything you do right. Kind of like No Life's Lost Objective, just for complete opposite of that. Is all. Oh, wait, let's destroy this fella. He had it come in. Let's grab the cheese too whilst we're at it and then flip this over. We don't need to go and collect the treasure chest for a second time now, do we? So let's skip this and hurry up and get straight into it. The section that's going to take us a million years without any exaggeration whatsoever. Man, the section is slow. If this section wasn't so slow, I'd probably like it a little bit more. Or better yet, it wasn't just bulky and done all at once, you know, if they split it up a bit like they did in the Secret Vault of Secrets, and of course, Skylanders Giants. Anyway, we've got some more things to destroy, so we're going to hit that thing in the face, we're going to proceed to hit those guys in the face too, they had it coming, my friends, that's what they did, they had it coming. Okay, this guy's got to go boom, boom, he gone, we love to see it. Anyway. You guys got to go, or am I asking too much? Who am I kidding? Of course I'm asking too much. 
Boom, he's out of here. Boom, he's out of here. Oh no, he, he missed me actually. I was about to say, oh no, he dealt damage to me. That would be a lie. Doesn't this thing normally have a health bar on the UI, or am I just dreaming stuff up? Is my robot invincible right now? Because if it is, I have no problems with that whatsoever. Or perhaps it does have a health bar, which I just cannot see because the game glitched out and gave me an invisible UI. Which would not surprise me. This game tends to do that glitchy stuff uh, quite frequently, it feels like. Oh boy, those guys are finally out of here. This guy will be too in due time. That is once I can actually learn to shoot straight, which is a big ask of me, apparently. Oh boy, those continue traversing through the lava. Ooh. Oh, these guys have got to go. Or not, because apparently, you know, once again, I can't shoot. Being able to shoot well is just asking too much, okay, guys? So stop asking me for it. It's not happening. Me being good at the video game. But hey, we can at least punch these guys when in doubt. And that, in and of itself, is absolute ugly. Ouch. Now those guys are all hitting me. That's just awfully rude, man. Awfully, awfully rude. And we hate to see it. Yes, we do. Okay, so now these guys have got to go. Yeah, there you are. Oh, and now we're getting hit some more. Hopefully we're not taking too much damage from a UI health bar that I cannot see because having to restart the entire section from the beginning would be a tragedy. I mean, we spent, like, what, 20 years walking through this anyway? I mean, that's probably how long it would take to traverse through this on foot without the might of the key and given how large the scale this place is and, you know, every time this guy takes a step, it's got to be a day journey for a scar. You know, just look at how big this guy is. I'm sure that's no exaggeration. It's also not exaggeration that we've spent 20 years here already. My god, this section is slow. Why is it so slow? Couldn't they have made the walking speed of this guy, like, at least 1% rather than the 0.1% that he is? Because, yes, that's how speeds work. They are percentages. I mean, it's a number at the end of the day, and that's the only thing that a code understands. Numbers, mind you. Either way, let's take this guy down. Oh, so now there's a health bar with UI. It's just not ours. And this guy isn't even hitting us right now. Pathetic. Boom, but we're hitting him. Good old left hook to a face. He had it coming flippantly funny. But now I need to wait for the beast to finish walking left. And then it can walk forward. Wow. What glory without a hint of sarcasm nor a shadow of doubt. So yeah, I just got to wait for this to finish on up. Open sesame! Or am I asking too much? Who am I kidding? Of course I'm asking too much. As the thing proceeds to not open sesame. Okay, so we got to restore the power. Not skip over cutscene because that's asking for too much. But yeah, there is the very eternal magic source that we are looking for. In the main vault, as Lord Master put it. See, yep, that is pretty sweet. I mean, how could it be anything but sweet now, right? Sweet is exactly what it is. Either way, now we need to do exactly as Fourth Master has put it, because we can't skip the cutscene. He's explaining everything to us that does not need to be explained, because we know what to do already as is. Thank you very much. It's almost like I've played this level before, so much so that I knew that the air element was popping up, where we could take advantage of Whirlwind over here. Let's go. It's been a while since we've seen any screen time from her, mind you. Other way, those guys are dying, we like to see it. We like to see it a lot. Good grief, this guy is down and out of here, sweet. Okay. Yeah, so that's some fools then for looking at me funny. What do they think they're doing? Look at me funny like that. What do they think they're doing? Hey, hey you! Yeah, you're not gonna look at me funny like that now, are you? Oh no, you're not. That's what I thought, eh? I weigh enough of me and my really, really crappy old um, trash talk. There is one thing about my trash talk, and that's the very fact that it is trashy. It's literal trash talk, and the fact that I'm talking trash. Anyway, you've explained this already to me. I don't need to hear more of it as the element of the area switches out for magic, so it's time for 
voodoo to shine because I don't trust an unupgraded spiral to get through this without dying. Trust him, I do not. Anyway, let's be walking through here. Luckily for us, we don't have speedrun objectives to deal with, so it doesn't matter how slow Voodoo may or may not be. In fact, there is no may or may not be. He just is slow. End of story. That's how it works. Okay, let's destroy every last one of those fools with my axe having for a ridiculous hitbox that it has. Either way, surely for the air element is gonna, gonna remain, isn't going to remain here for long because, like, I just swapped out for magic, and to be honest, I can't be up bothered to switch out again, so... We're just going to skip with this and bend the rules ever so slightly. Excellent. Here we go. We have indeed found the security card. Congratulations for noticing Weapon Master. Anyway, now that we've done that, the element of the area is showing no signs of change. So it's time to go back to Whirlwind again as I switch my Skardas on the portal back and forth. I switch my Skardas back and forth. My Skardas back and forth. I can make an entire tone, uh, tune out that even if... It wasn't the fact that I am a terrible singer, terrible at said tunes being sung. Okay, here we go. Let's take down some fools then. All they gotta do is not pull off another Warnado, which is easy said and done, my friends. This is me we're talking about here, I'm afraid. Where are those rockets coming from? Them firing at me, it's just awfully rude. Oh, here come more fools. That'll be an awfully rude once more. Oh, watch out for the rockets. Okay, here we are. So many rockets though, Jesus, matey. Somehow we didn't die, I will take it. Now if only we had a second whirlwind and two players, because then whirlwind could heal up whirlwind, thanks to the mighty uh, soul gem that we seeked out earlier when we seeked out her soul, mind you. Doran for a creepy citadel, and oh boy, was it creepy. So let's grab this cheese and activate the console without further ado. I mean, the console is already activated. I am playing this on a 360 for Pete's sake, so that, technically speaking, is a console, the last time I checked. So, yep, now we have more unskippable cutscenes. Great! I say that without sarcasm or an annoyance whatsoever. Oh, wait, these guys are all going down with a might of warming right here. Told you so! As are these guys, right here. Ouch, or not, you know, apparently they're gonna get a cheeky, cheeky hit on me. How so very cheeky, so much so that I said it twice, even. Oh, wait, let's bring out some Tempest Clouds. That's gonna be a lot of damage right off the bat. Boom, baby, and it's what we like to see. So now we have the final switch to have to deal with, and it's all the way back down here once more. Luckily for us, Whirlwind has maneuverability and speed, so getting down there will be of no problem for us whatsoever. And luckily she's also not Warnado, so therefore she won't suck a push from being good at the video game, but an unlike previously mentioned Warnado, mind you. Yeah, there we go, we got some food, a piece of deep stew to interrupt the combat section, and some damage all being done at the same time. If you get more glorious than that, then I never have seen it, mind you. This is the peak of gloriousness, if I was to say so myself, and I'd know because I know a thing or two about glorious things. I am the dictionary definition of glory at the end of the day. You look up glory in the dictionary and you will see my handsome face right alongside it. And what's so handsome about my face is the great big head of hair a top of it. Either way, we finally have our triple stars, that is great. And now we'll head back to the Dark Light Crypt to speedrun that because that's actually a fun level, unlike the Pirate Seas, which I can't be asked to tackle right now because I do not like that level. I do not like it at all. Plus, it's another level that really screwed me over with the uh, enemy goal objectives. In fact, no, it didn't. It's a treasure chest that I've missed. <laughs> Here's the thing there's so many levels in this game that I'm constantly forgetting what objectives uh, it, I did and did not get. So, with Dark Light Crypt, it's for speedrun objective, I believe. You know, unfortunately, we have to wait through this cutscene first, which is unskippable. And it's long too, so that's not great. But once that's said, then we can indeed check the objectives to make sure that it is the speedrun that I'm missing out upon. Most likely, that shall indeed be the case. Knowing my luck. Actually, no, that would be rather lucky because it's rather easy to speedrun levels of this caliber, so that's all I'll need to do. And this time around, I have actual life and magic scarders, so the entire thing won't be effectively an ignite from Ghost Roaster Solo Shot. Even though I have no problems with an ignite or Ghost Roaster Solo Shot in perfect honesty, because both those characters are absolutely awesome. 
Anyway, Baddison, can you shut up and just let us proceed already? I know, I know already how this level works. Good grief, these guys just... You can't shut up, they can't help but make the level slow paced, but luckily for me, once we get into the actual level itself, we're going to absolutely blaze through it. The level itself is fast paced, so once you get all this exposition at the beginning of the level, out of here, things really start heating up. Hilarious pun now, because there's a fire gate in this level, therefore heating up, fire, it's a pun, ha ha, very funny now, laugh at my joke, I see you not laughing, laugh at it already, I command you, that's how commanding works, and when I command, you gotta do it, there's no getting out of it, you don't laugh at my joke, I see you still not laughing, laugh, already, okay, it's not difficult, just laugh at my legendary joke, okay, laugh at it, Good. Now that you're done laughing at it and I'm done breaking the fourth wall, I would hope that the next thing I would say is that Batterson is now done with a cutscene, but that is asking too much, my friends. And my chair is still as squeaky as the previous session, mind you. I mean, why would that squeak go away now, right? That would be asking too much. Oh, wait, what's really cool about the world switching platforms on this level is that they have light and dark looking icons upon them. So it's almost as if we're switching from light and dark, a little bit of foreshadowing for the future elements of Skarners that will pop up from Trap Team onwards, where they will continue to remain a second thought for every single game, even in Imaginators, when those elements were well established, they still just kind of gave us fewer characters of those elements, for some reason. Don't know why they just did deal with it, and words of my tough work as we fly on over here and activate an area where Chop Chop He's going to garner himself center stage. It's about time we played as him, you know, we've given Ghost Roaster and Cinder plenty of screen time, so it's about time we started the evening that out with your boy Chop Chop over here as I absolutely slice and dice through these guys. Oh wait, these guys in the real world aren't so threatening, so let's take him out. A uh, bye bye. And his, you know, puny little friends too, once we walk on over here. Boom and boom we go again, let's be switching worlds to a world of the moon icon, aka the dark element of Skardeners. Who would have known that dark and the undead had so much in common? Either way, boom boom, shake the room. Combos for the win! Without further ado, let us, after the lock monster imp has finished uh, speaking that is, complete said lock puzzle with the lock imp himself. Did I just cop this up already? Yes, I think I did, so we're just going to restart. Okay, here we are. So this time, I think what we actually got to do is go left. Yep, that's it. We got it right that time. Left again. Luckily for us, we don't need to deal with the same, like, elemental, well, lock puzzle area even than what we did with, of course... Ye good old um, legendary treasure because that one was the one that was as problematic as it was. So here we just gotta go there and finish it off down here where we're gonna get a perfect score. And of course it's perfect. Just like my hair as the uh, area changes, but I'm too busy striking these guys down to worry about that at this exact moment in time. But now I can switch over with ease over to. Blame Slinger, our perfect speedrunner for the area at hand, because he's fire and he runs on fire. You know, not only is that perfect for his element, it's also perfect for speedrunning. Two things that we need exactly right now. So let's continue to speedrun. We like to see it much. Okay, there we go. We push this guy. Boom, baby. Then we come back here. Don't worry about the fire gate. We already have everything from there that we needed to grab. So then all we got to do is push that guy back there. Bounce on up and open up as a gate. Because now that we're in the world of the living, we first of all have trees to deal with apparently. For predecessors of the bark demon nightmares and giants. But you know, the flames are no trouble whatsoever. But either way, in the world of the living, we can finally make it past those guys with ease. And now swap out for Spyro. Open magic element, I think we do just add enough screen time as is. So yes, here we are, all we got to do is not die to these guys. Easy said and done with a under upgraded spiral, I'm afraid. But luckily for us he is nearly level ten, so we just at least have that going for him. And hey, he has enough 
the money for some upgrades should we get them uh, later in the game, mind you. Okay, boom, there goes those guys. They even left behind some watermelons. Not that we needed it. And now the Earth enemy goal area has finally proceeded to get out of here. Okay, here we are. Let's continue dashing on around right here. Man, this guy is real speedy. So let's shift back to World of the Undead where that gate's going to open for us. We're going to have a rather blurred out teleport pad, apparently. You know, get into, once again, preview later parts of the level right now. But hey, no matter where you are on the level, you can always see the central maze in the middle of it. And that's just really cool design, being able to see the gloriousness that awaits you. Because, man, that maze is well designed. Ouch. Well, it's not well designed or just well thought out in general. It is my lack of being able to cross this area. Okay, let's destroy that guy before, you know, I activate the world of the undead and you know make it possible for him to destroy me that way we've got to wait for these guys to line up all the way at the top right now come on guys line yourselves up right for the slaughtering boom baby there you are thank you much for that so let's head on back over here and from there we can shift ourselves back to the world of the undead where, of course, that lock puzzle can be tackled. Okay, there we are. We completed the puzzle. Simple as that. Awesome and well designed, as always. Okay, there we are. So, let's get back here, baby. Oh. Oh, wait, we've got to get him out of here. Oh boy, I'm not doing a great job getting him out of here, am I? Okay, let's go back here, I guess. Yeah, sure, that was 100% what I intended to do right now. Okay. Okay, sweet, now that he's completely out of the way, we can complete this puzzle with absolute ease, mind you. Yep, here we are, that guy's not getting anywhere near me. Told you so, it wasn't a perfect score, but at the end of the day it was excellent, and what matters is that in the end we got past the puzzle all the same, and granted access to the haunted village where we must find and defeat Oculus. It's going to start by us having to defeat these fools right in here, take some damage, just for good measure apparently. Ouch, take some more damage, again, just for good uh, measure. Look at this guy, he's a going down, or not. I could just take the hit in the face intensively, I suppose. With that being said, let's hit this switch right now. Boom, baby. Shifted right on back here. And let's uh, get out of here without further ado. Boom, teleport pad, that's what we like to see. Unfortunately, that means we have all of these guys to defeat right now. Not great for speedrun and past them, unfortunately, when there are enemies there that we must be defeating all the same. But now we can charge on down all the way down here. And continue charging whilst we're at it, where the life element is going to become stronger. So let us bring out Zook, a life crash that we haven't seen for a while, but hopefully he won't jeopardize our... Um, Speed on right here. I doubt he will. I mean, these are tight, compact corridors, so movement speed of any kind should be fast enough and swift enough to get these speedrun objectives cleared out. Anyway, we're not playing just any regular old Zook. Instead, we have Unizook. Oh, I don't get much more better than Zook wearing this glorious hat atop his head right now, or whatever it is you want to call it that the hat is atop of. The point is, it's a unicorn hat that makes him Unizook. And it is raw perfection, that which you see before you at this very moment in time. Man, do I love me Unizook. Unizook? Huh, as, as if Zook is going to university. Like me, we can relate. But yeah, I don't mean Unizook as in University Zook. I mean Unizook as in Unicorn Zook, even though that was quite self-explanatory. So why I'm going out of my way to explain it, I do not know. Ooh, key, look at that. Ooh, another key, look at that. Anyway, let's shift to the world of the undead, I guess. 
Hit down some fools with the might of our just everything. Because this guy, boy, he is mighty. Anyway, we pushed that forward. So now we're going to head back here where the gates have been opened. I'm going to take down some fools with my volley shots back here. Or better yet, we just activate ourselves and go back to the world of the living where those guys can become nothing. Bit easy statues to pick off. And then we've got this Bart Demon too, of course. But that guy's dealt with. Easy as that. So let's be teleporting about for we do. Boom, baby. Oh, we've got more of those fools because I pressed wrong buttons. Well, oh, then you know my good old corn volley shot that is really OP when it leaves behind the cactus is too on top of that. It's just so much cacti that these guys just can't seem to catch a break. They're dealt a ton of damage by it. Yeah, let's destroy those guys right here. We need to ship back to the world of the undead in order to push these uh, crates out of the way. Wait a minute. Okay, so where can I go to get back to the land of the undead? Yeah, I can't push that. I can't push this in the world of living either, can I? Oh, no, it's lifted back up. I was about to say, did I just soft lock myself? But luckily that's lifted back up, so we can just head back here. Go back to the land of the undead. Because, say, if that thing didn't lift itself back up and I couldn't push it, then I'll be soft lock here because I would not be able to get past this here icon thing with Bob. Anyway, now we've got to go back to the land of living again because that tree is blocking the way and that's just awfully rude, man. So let's take out the tree from back here because that's what I got my corn volley shot for. Boom, boom, shake the room. Triple shots, didn't even need the third and final one in the end as we finally shift back to the land of the undead. I know, right, it's about time much. And now another tree is in the freaking way. Can I just push it and destroy the tree? No, no I cannot because the tree is still in the way. What an annoying tree. If this tree screws over my re uh, speed run, I swear to God. And here's the thing, the tree's not even there anymore. So where did the tree come from? This tree is turning me insane, insane, I tell you. Okay, let's destroy that tree, just to be safe. And now, hopefully this time around, there won't be a tree, because they're closing a tree there now, so there shouldn't be a tree when I shift over between worlds now, should there? Okay, can I push this thing with ease at long last? Yes, yes I can. Apparently, you know, beforehand I was asking too much to be able to do that, but now we've finally done that, we can finally shift back to the world of the living, Boy, this is so many finalies, you can tell I'm getting annoyed, but this is still my favourite level in the game, so I can't moan too much. And this game, uh, this level even just gets so much right, I love it, it's so perfectly designed, it's just raw perfection in and of itself, end of story, that's how it works. Now let's get through our cactus bushes to finally open up this gate right here, which we can only do in the land of the living, thanks to the keys that we acquired. So now... Beyond the maze where Undead is activated once more, so it's back. It's a chop chop, baby. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. I don't know where that tune came from and why it just suddenly and inexplicably entered into my head. It just did, so deal with it all the same. And man, we crossed out of absolute ease. But right now, we have Gallant back there to speak with, so. Let's be bouncing on up several times, taking the long way around apparently of all things. I just really wanted to activate that bounce pad apparently. So here I am atop the cannon and now we finally have Gallant for which we can speak to. Uh, but first and first we need to be in the world of the undead. Okay, locally they're going to you know, be generous enough to let me skip over that cutscene. Thank heavens for that. I really did not want to have to listen to that. Anyway, let's bring both me and Oculus back into the real world. Then, boom goes the cannon, right into his giant freaking eyeball. Okay, come on, can you activate this thing please, or am I asking too much? Boom, baby, combos and sword strikes away, I just can't seem to hit this thing right now. I mean, beforehand it seemed to work, I forgot hit by the blast apparently, so... You know, I suppose all i got to do is get hit by that blast as fast as possible. Speed run to hit by eye blast percent, I suppose. Oh, wait. Apparently, bounce pads don't activate in the world of the undead. Now, that's something new that I just discovered, apparently. So, let's hit this guy in his giant eyeball. Boom, baby. Bring out some combos. Infinite combos at that. You know, those combos won't go anywhere anytime soon. So, let's get hit by that. Shift back to the world of the undead for our final phase of boss fight where... 
Hopefully we can hurry up and defeat this before we fail the speedrun objective because boy that would be tragic. Okay, there we go. Get hit by that immediately. Not that we needed to, because now all we've got to do is find this final cannon, defeat Oculus. So, we've got to continue getting out of here. Boom! See ya. Yeah, let's skip that. Shift back to World of the Undead. Not that we even need to, because Galen apparently can be spoken to in World of the Living also. There's one thing I did not know until this moment in time, so let's be skipping over this and gathering our triple stars to perfectly end off the episode with. We are approaching the end game now, fellas. We just have Pirate Seas, good old um, Dragon's Peak, and then the final few levels, as well as all 33 heroic challenges to go for 33 or 32 heroic challenges, even though 33 of them. But regardless, that's where most of our time in the end game. Uh, within the end game, even will be spent. I'm speaking too fast for my own good, so it definitely is about time that I just ended the episode already before I continue on my hyper train of hyperness and just make the world spontaneously combust, I suppose. Now, with that all being said and done, this video is coming to an end, but before that happens, I first want to thank all my Blazing Knights and Scotland Dragons whose support allow me to continue pumping out quality videos like this one. Without them, this all wouldn't be possible. Therefore, I genuinely appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this video, I have others you can watch by clicking on screen now, and you can even subscribe by pressing the button on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Ben. Until that moment arises, peace.